Why, hello everyone. Welcome to another video in the Big Microcontroller tutorial series. In this video, we are going to talk about the memory organization of PIC 16F877A. But before we go further, why do we need to know the memory organization of a microcontroller? One reason is it tells the MCU's efficiency on whether it is capable on retrieving the instruction and data in one cycle. Another reason is it informs us about the size and limitation of each memory area. So without any further ado, let's begin. There are three types of memory. The program memory, the data memory, and the data double EEPROM. Program memory is the memory where instructions are written or the code you have written is stored. This type of memory is non-volatile memory, which means that instructions or data written here will be retained even if power is removed. The program memory of PIC16F877A has 8K words where each word has a length of 14 bits of flash program memory. So it ranges from 000H until 1FFFH. Observe that the program memory has different sectors. It has reset, interrupt, and a number of pages from page 0 to page 3. Now, the number of pages varies from microcontroller to microcontroller. The reset vector is where the microcontroller begins executing instructions during startup. The interrupt vector contains the addresses that the microcontroller will jump to for a particular interrupt. For example, you have a variable that holds the total number of seconds that the MCU is running, and you want to increment it every second. What you have to do is create an interrupt vector that would occur every second, and then create a function that would increment that variable by one. Then take the address of that function and put it in the interrupt vector. You don't have to worry about that right now. We are going to talk more about interrupts later in the series. Next is the data memory. This is a volatile memory, which means that once the power is taken out from the system, any information that was written to this memory is lost. Data memory is partitioned into multiple bags. Each bank has a general purpose register and special function registers. SFR controls the MCU and its available peripherals. Allow me to pull up the PIC16F87XA datasheet and show you what I meant about the bank I was talking about when it comes to um, data memory. Let's go here, memory organization, and then data memory organization. So as you can see here, there are four banks, bank zero to bank three, and this is the register, the special function register in order to access the bank. So if we are going to set the SFR to zero zero, we are accessing bank zero and so on and so forth. So let's just go down and see what the bank look, looks like. So for the, okay, this is the 87874. 7, what we have is the 877. So we are interested in looking at the 877A banks. Okay, so here, here we have the 877A. So these are the different banks. Let's move down. So we have bank 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and these are the different SFRs, the special function registers that controls the peripherals. So, and below that, 
below each bank at the at the bottom part we have the general purpose registers see here and here okay so as you can see in bank one we have timer zero this controls the timer zero profile and then so on and so forth we're going to talk more about each um, peripheral as we go so for now it's just good to know that uh, these exist and that in order to control a particular peripheral we have to access the SFR and now we know where to find them and where it is actually located and finally we have the data double EPRO this memory is also a non-volatile memory. The value that are saved here will be retained when power is removed. So when we actually use a double EEPROM, say you wanted to create a digital thermometer that could save the temperature of a room at a particular interval, you cannot save it in the RAM because it is a volatile memory. As soon as the power is taken out of the system, all those information will be lost. You also cannot save it in the program memory because you cannot write in the program memory at one time. Double EEPROM is created for that purpose. It allows you to save a small amount of data that you could be able to retrieve later, even if power is cut off. And finally, the PIC implements the Harvard architecture. The program memory and the data memory has separate data buses, which means that at the one clock cycle, it can retrieve both program and data simultaneously. Unlike the von Neumann architecture, which only has a single data bus, this architecture would need two clock cycles to retrieve the instructions and the data. I don't want to dive into any more details between the differences of the two architecture because that discussion deserves a video of its own. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, Please leave in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to receive all the updates of my upcoming videos.